So I truly apologize for, for this. I hope that some of you will actually join back in here. So this is what I want to share with you guys. <clears throat> so the title of this live stream is called uh, Three Tone Exercises. So what I want to do is I want to, um, to I want to share with you some really great tips on how to expand your sound, you know, how to create a better, a more relaxed sound so it just sounds nicer and more consistent. And at the same time, I also want to give you um, some tips on how to create a better embouchure, a more relaxed embouchure that doesn't really produce weird noises and squeaks and, and, and all those things. Okay, so let's dive in into, into this. <clears throat> the very first thing that you want to remember is that the way you blow is probably the most important, it's not probably, it's, it's the most important thing <clears throat> when you play the saxophone, okay? Because the machine, this, okay? This is your machine, okay? And that's where everything happens. So if that is not in place, if air is not, um, is not happening the way it should, you know, then everything else is just gonna be a little bit weird. So you're gonna have troubles with whatever, rhythm or tongue in or whatever and why not, okay? So <clears throat> we need to find a solution to allow you to, to play more effortlessly in a more in, in a way more naturally okay so there's a thing that i call the ocean sound and a lot of my students know about this and the ocean sound is nothing more than this okay so ocean sound is is my way of of picturing things because i like the ocean i like waves i like wind and stuff like that so and rem this sound reminds me of the ocean Okay, and this this equals to the um, uh, playing with an open throat sentence. Same thing, you know, playing with an open throat, <sighs> ocean sound, exactly the same thing. Because we're trying to uh, relax the throat. Because this is what happens. When you blow air from here, okay, you can be a master yogi and have the most amazing breathing technique ever, okay? But then air goes up up, 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 okay? And air is eventually gonna go into the throat and then into the oral cavity and into the saxophone, okay? If the throat has some kind of tension or some kind of obstacle in there, uh, what happens is that everything that you're blowing from here will kind of be blocked by the throat like this, you know? And then it will just not, everything that you're pushing will actually go into the saxophone. So by doing the ocean sound, um, This will allow you to release and relax the throat. So everything that you're pushing, everything that you're blowing from here will actually go up and will go into the saxophone, okay? So a really cool thing that you can do when you practice is <clears throat> this. You should do an ocean sound sound <laughs> before you play. So, and then you play your note, okay? Let's check out the difference together. So I'm, I'm going to do a note first, okay? Just a beat, okay? And I'm going to do it without the ocean sound. And let's see, and let's hear how it sounds. Now it's really cold in here, so it's just, everything is just messed up. Let's see. Okay, so that's the sound. Um, normal sound, okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the ocean sound first and then I'm gonna play my note and let's compare the difference. So. Oh, so much better. Now notice I have a scarf, I have a sweater. It's really cold because heating is not working here. So I'm just freezing, okay. Um, the very first note that I did was a bit wobbly, you know, I haven't played it in like 10 minutes because I was teaching now. And so I left the saxophone for 10 minutes and the way the sound sounded was like a little wavy, okay? So, but after doing the ocean sound, everything went into place magically, okay? So this is an amazing thing that you can do because whether you have an issue down here, you know, the low notes, whether you have an issue with some rattling sounds or whether you have an issue with high notes or whatever issues you have, you know, 
the ocean sun will just fix pretty much everything <laughs> okay just because it's you know it's just when you do this everything just goes down the, the shoulders drop down you know you're more relaxed the body goes like thank you very much i really needed to be a bit more relaxed for those few seconds okay so you should try that um just a little tip this should not be a forced sound it shouldn't it shouldn't go or, or anything you just let it let it out like this okay there shouldn't be any kind of forcement in in the ocean sound the more relaxed it is the better everything will be on the sax okay so give that a try now the other thing I want to talk to you about is um, a thing that I call the window exercise. Now, this is for you to expand your sound and to sound a little bit more consistent and to sound a little bit more uh, present, okay? Now, <clears throat> what I see a lot in lessons is this. A lot of people have a tendency to um, have a soft, shy sound, okay? Either because, you know, we live in small flats here in London or you know, or you're afraid of neighbors telling you off because you, you play whatever, okay? So, for whatever reason, um, a lot of people have this shy sound. And what we need to do is we actually need to conscious that and to actually have a nice and consistent um, sound, okay? The idea behind this is not really to blow more, okay? But is to change your perception, change your mindset, okay? So, you're able to find a nice and consistent sound without really doing too much. So I call this the window exercise because of this. Now, pretend I have a window. Pretend you guys are behind a window, okay? So you wanna find a window in your house, okay? Go in front of it and then pick a point which is distant from you, okay? It can be a tree, it can be a leaf, it can be a bench, it can be, I don't know, it can be a bike, parked in there, whatever it is, doesn't matter, as long as it's, you know, far away from you, okay? <clears throat> and what, you, what I want you to do is, I want you to play a low note, let's just take our B, which is simple enough, okay? I want you to play that B and just concentrate on whatever you've chosen, bah, and project your sound to there. Let me show you. So, I'm actually gonna choose the corner of this lamp over here, okay? And I'm gonna project my sound to there. That's the only thing I'm gonna focus on. cold today <laughs> so my sound is all wobbly a little bit i don't know if you can hear it but i'm trying to correct it as much as possible and this thing actually helps a lot okay so i don't know if you can hear it but my sound is like tries to be i'm trying to make it as straight as possible okay so let me do it again do it with me much better much better you know so the idea behind this is that you concentrate you know you focus on something that is not here you know if you know my phone is just really near if you have a friend if you're playing for a friend you know who's not far then your mind won't be doing too much will be a little lazy will be like you know this person is here i don't really need to blow too much why you know so you're actually gonna be having half of your potential in your sound because mentally you're not doing much okay but when you face the window and pick something distant from you in this case the lamp over here you know already your mind is already doing something else is already switching up it's, it's already you know more active it was like okay well now my sound has to go from here all the way there okay so what happens is 
mentally your mind activates more okay which is activating your muscles here boom okay so there's more push and automatically there's more sound okay that's all okay so it's just a mindset thing it's a perception of where you're projecting the sound if um if the sound is the sound going from here to here or is the sound going from here to here okay if you practice like that if you remember this you know you're gonna build up a really nice and strong consistent sound okay um and that's what you want firstly you want to build your sound from a a mezzo forte forte perspective you know mezzo forte forte dynamic and then from there once you once you can sound pretty good in there you in, you're gonna start to work on dynamics and you know try to bring the dynamics down and, and control them but first build your sound from a forte dynamic and then bring it down after that okay makes sense so the window exercise pick something distant from you and aim for that do it once a day you know whenever you start playing as a warm-up fly and keep it as consistent and as straight as possible okay now um <clears throat> the the aim for this is to keep it straight straight like this and never lose it and if you notice i become all red because i'm really pushing you know I, and you want to um hold the note maintain the note until the very very end until you have nothing left okay don't just go okay i'm just doing my window exercise <laughs> And then you die <laughs> okay no 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 keep it for forever okay if you could so check it out Okay, because doing that means that all the muscles here are actually going to be all engaged and you're going to be actually doing a workout and you're going to be actually doing good training for your muscles and for your sound. Okay, that's it. Now, um, there's two more things I want to share with you guys and it's this time is about the embouchure. Okay, <clears throat> now there's a very common problem that I see with a lot of people and for embouchure and it's it relates to the position of this part of the chin okay now uh, what happens is that the reed needs to be free to vibrate okay we need to make um, everything that everything possible to make the reed vibrate freely as soon there's some kind of obstacle and not letting the reed vibrate then the sound is gonna suffer you know and you're gonna have all sorts of weird issues here and there and one of those is this check it out so look at my chin you know it's all like this it's all bunched up it's all um tense which means that if i'm doing this where is the pressure going? It's going up, which means it's going where? Boom, it's going to the reed, okay? So what we need to do is we actually need to release that a little bit so we don't really have extra pressure that we don't need on the reed and the reed can actually vibrate properly, okay? So the idea is to bring the chin down so it just, everything's free to vibrate. Now, whether it doesn't really matter what type of embouchure you have, whether you have the lip out or the lip in or whatever, you know? You don't wanna you wanna avoid having extra pressure on the reed. Okay. So we need to build a little bit of um awareness into the chin in order to contrast that um that action. So if you guys are doing this when you play, or if you have no idea whether you're doing it or not, do something. Next time you play, take your phone and do a little clip of yourself playing and then go like, hmm, is my chin doing that or not? Okay, so that's the first thing you wanna do. The next thing you want to do is you want to isolate the actual chin movement and you want to ask yourself can i can you do this okay this is the isolation of the chin if you're able to do that cool because you just need to bring it down when you play 
if you cannot do it, which is a common thing that people cannot do, it's not the end of the world. Everyone can do it. Okay, <laughs> this is the way I teach it. Um, bite your lip, punch up, and then with your fingers, try to bring it down. What this will do will just add more awareness into the chin and then the muscle will muscles will start to activate in a way and then do that for a few days you know whenever you remember and really try to isolate it that's all okay so that's a really important thing so you want to avoid pressing too much against the reed okay now the other thing i want to share with you guys is this um there's a massive um problem that happens with people squeaking you know and squeaks are really annoying super annoying you know they can happen on different notes on specific notes can be can happen randomly you know but a very common issue that happens with people that squeak is related to the teeth and the lip okay i want you to try something i want you to experiment with something so um what happens if we have our top teeth on the mouthpiece and our bottom teeth on the reed okay so we're basically biting like this and we're trying to play okay let me let me try it <clears throat> try it with me so top teeth on the mouthpiece uh, bottom teeth on the reed right I squeak I mean there's no sound it's just weird squeaks weird noises okay that is because the re um what is it <laughs> the teeth and the reed I say they're not really good friends okay so this is the very extreme of course no one plays like this because it's not possible to play like this so what you want to ask yourself next time you squeak you want to check what's happening with your lip you know now again whether you have your lip out your your lip your lip in doesn't really matter. The important thing is how much um, help is the the lip um, giving you. Okay. So because if if you have very little lip on top of your, your of your teeth, you're still gonna get some weird noises. Check it out. If I have very 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 little tip, very little bottom lip. Firstly, I cannot even play play a sound, and then eventually you get a squeak, or just it's not gonna work. Okay, so next time you squeak, check the position of your bottom lip and check whether your teeth are too close to the reed, um, and if they are, experiment with having a little bit more um, lip, because remember the lip acts as a cushion between um, the teeth and the reed. We need the lip in order for the reed to vibrate. If we don't have any lip, then we're screwed because, <laughs> you know, there's there's no sound. Okay, so that's a very important thing that you want to remember. So, to sum up, this is what we talked about. We talked about the ocean sound, okay, um, which is gonna free your throat up and so everything that you're blowing from here will actually go up and there won't be any obstacles and in the air okay we talked about the window exercise which is a way to expand your sound to project your sound to build your sound to a nice and consistent loud level okay and then from there you're just gonna drop down into dynamics so what you do is you face the window you pick a point and then you project your sound to that point okay and then problems we talked about the um the embouchure bunch uh, sorry the the chin bunching up like this okay which adds pressure to the reed and doesn't let the reed vibrate properly okay so what you want to do is you bring want to bring the chin down mm, like that okay <clears throat> and then we talked about the importance of the lip on the teeth whether it's rolled in or rolled out you want to have your teeth away from the reed otherwise you um, run in the risk of uh, squeaking okay so that's what we talked about it's actually more than three exercises is just you know very important and basic things that we that you need to be aware of in order to have a nice sound nice embouchure you know just nice 
fundamentals down, super important things, okay? Now, um, if guys, if there's any questions, just let me know, just put them here in the chat and I will answer them. And um, we're very close to the end of this really short life. And I wanna share something with you, um, which is an amazing, amazing opportunity for everyone. So if you're into saxophone, if you're you know pretty serious about playing the saxophone and everything, you wanna get even better, um, I'm holding a virtual masterclass with a guest artist whose name is Chris Urbanski. If you don't know Chris Urbanski, go and check him out on Instagram and YouTube. He's an, an amazing player. He's just incredible. He's going to do a masterclass on the 22nd of January. And he's going to be talking about probably the most important fundamental pillar of music, which is timing. So he has a killer sense of timing and he's going to share with us so many so many methods and tricks and methods and systems and whatever you know exercises that he's made up with with his students and it's going to be just an amazing thing an amazing chance and you actually get to play for him if you want to you just have to sign up and then you will get the chance to play for him it's a live event on zoom uh we can only hold a number a certain number of seats and so if you want to sign up, the link is here below in the description. It'll be super awesome to have you guys. I just cannot wait for this. It's just going to be too cool. <laughs> um, uh, that's one thing. Uh, the other thing is um, if you need more um, tips on how to improve your your saxophone playing, there's a free PDF that you can download. It's in those seven great tips that you can, you know, have and start incorporating in your practice. Um, just sign up, the link is here below in the description. Lastly, um, I have an online premium saxophone course, uh, which will guide you m through all these concepts in more in depth, more um, in a more refined way. You know, it's this, I just scratched the surface of, of these, these concepts, but um, there's, so much stuff in there <laughs> so if you're interested in you know having more guidance and and having more um help in your sax playing just again the link is here below in the description guys i think that's all if there's no questions just you know i will see you soon i will see you at the masterclass with chris urbanski i hope link here below in the description uh i wish you a great evening day afternoon whatever you are and it was a pleasure this was my first youtube live i'll do uh, many more and yeah take care guys thank you so much for tuning in bye bye